No discussion of the mind-body problem would be complete without mentioning strong artificial intelligence. Uh, we've learned a lot about computers over the last 50 years, and it, it, the, uh, the computer serves as a great model for how the mind might work. Um, it, we might be able to say the mind is to the brain as software is to the computer. This concept wasn't easy to gain. Um, uh, it took, uh, uh, there was a famous um, scientist, uh, Alan Turing, a mathematician, and he, he spent a lot of his time explaining how a computer could work long before we had computers in order to ask some interesting questions about the mind and the brain. So um, right now, we are programming computers to do our thinking for us. And there's lots of people programming computers right now to try to de be uh, artificially intelligent, or as, at least as intelligent as possible. At some point, could you call them conscious? Would you even know if they were conscious? These are the kind of questions. Could, it be, could a computer be conscious? Alan, Alan Turing showed that um, it, it, it only takes a set of instructions that you would have in a universal Turing machine to solve any mathematical problem. Is that sufficient for consciousness? Does consciousness, can, can consciousness come about just from information flowing inside a computer? Could you simulate a brain? Or do you actually have to have um, uh, sodium and hydrogen and things flowing, being slopped back and forth inside the neurons in the brain to actually have consciousness? These are important questions, and it leads to the idea of the substrate. Like, what, what can a consciousness run in uh, on a silicon chip, or does it need to run in a carbon-based um, biological thing like my brain, or could anything have consciousness? And this leads to a, another concept that needs to be mentioned, and uh, not, only are, not only artificial intelligence, but a lot of the other fields of, of and explanations for consciousness lead to the idea of panpsychism. If it turns out that consciousness can operate in something other than just a brain, well, what are the limits? Can, um, can consciousness operate um, in a rock? Can consciousness operate in a big network of uh, telephone uh, circuitry or in the atmosphere? Um, the idea of panpsychism is the fact that there's some basic psychological force in the universe and that things can tap into it. And obviously our brains tap into it and we all have some kind of consciousness, but it doesn't just end at our brains. Now there's arguments against panpsychism. Um, so far nothing in the universe has ever been observed that it causes us to believe in some kind of a cosmic consciousness. Consciousness seems to be confined to brains. Um, there's also some problem with where exactly it seems like our, our consciousness is divided into a unit we feel like we have a single identity if there's panpsychism why does my consciousness end at the end of my brain why doesn't it extend out into other things those are good arguments against panpsychism well what I try to do is create a view of the landscape of this whole thing of the mind-body problem of the problem of consciousness um, this is the traditional view and like I was saying, I think it's busted in some ways, and we're going to have to improve on it and reorganize the data.